Hello everyone and thank you for choosing NGIB preparation. So in my final exams I got 100% on my paper 2, the 20 out of 20 on both the development and international trade paper 2. And I've gotten a lot of questions um, as to how you can do this as well. So before we go over my past paper during my mock exams in which I also got 20 out of 20, I'll give you some general tips for understanding the text and making the most use out of your reading time. So of course the first tip is do use your reading time, read through the text as many times as possible, and don't just brush over things that you didn't understand. And related to this, it's super important that you highlight and take the time to really acknowledge those tiny words or phrases that might give you hints as to how to answer the 8 mark question. So they usually at the end of the paper too, the 8 mark question asks you to evaluate some type of economic policy or decision. Within your paper 2 text, you're going to get a lot of hints as to how you can answer this question. The paper 2 text will actually guide you toward answering the 8 mark question correctly if you read the text carefully enough. And always, always, always question why. So like I said before, if you don't understand something, try to make sense of it via the economic theory. You can't just get a superficial understanding of the text that's not going to be enough because they're looking for that deeper understanding and that knowledge of economic theory. A big mistake that students make is that they just reiterate or describe what's happening in the text rather than analyzing it with connections to economic theory and that's what you really get points on. This is out of 20, you don't have a lot of marks to lose but with careful reading and time management you can for sure get a 7 on this paper. So right now I'm going to show you the November 2018 past paper 2. Okay so without further ado I'm going to start reading the paper 2. If you want you can mute me and read through it yourself, up to you. So the first paragraph says Nigeria was hit by a 17.5% fall in its oil export revenues in the second quarter because of weak prices and lower production. The slump in oil prices has reduced Nigeria's foreign currency reserves. Nigeria is Africa's biggest economy and a major oil exporter. The economy contracted by 0.4% in the first quarter of this year and by 2.06% in the second quarter. It has now officially moved into recession. Nigeria faces its worst financial crisis in decades due to the significant decline in world oil prices and last year's introduction of a fixed exchange rate system. In response, Nigeria's central bank has said it will move the country away from the fixed exchange rate regime to one that reflects market forces and this new policy is known as a managed float. The central bank previously pegged the naira, Nigeria's currency, at 197 naira to the US dollar. But economists suggest that the exchange rate is overvalued and it is suspected to fall significantly. The central bank will still have some control over the, the exchange rate. If the naira depreciates below a minimum value, the central bank will be able to use its foreign reserves to restore that value. The likely sharp fall in the value of the naira should stimulate the domestic economy but also increase inflation. Over the long term, a weaker currency will help Nigeria's economy by encouraging import substitution and attracting foreign investors who have stayed away from the country for fear of a devaluation. However, the move to a managed exchange rate regime will be painful over the short term. Higher import prices will add to inflation. This will probably force the authorities to tighten monetary policy. Nigeria's decision to float the currency and let the naira depreciate is not a long-term cure for the problems of the economy. Nigeria has to diversify its exports away from oil. It also has many structural problems that it needs to address, such as high levels of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Feel free to rewatch that part of the video if you didn't understand anything and to reread the paper 2 text. But right now we're going to begin with the questions. So the structure of a paper 2 is 1A um, being composed of two different two mark questions, usually definitions, then 1B is simply a four mark question that usually asks you to explain something of the text. Two marks are given for the diagram, two marks are given for the explanation of the diagram and of what is happening in the question. The same goes for question 1c and 1d of course the last question is a name mark question that is usually an evaluation question. Okay so let's begin. So the first question asks us to define the term inflation indicated in bold in the text. So inflation is obviously a sustained increase in the general price level over a period of time. The main components of this definition would be to include sustained increase and in the general price level. And those will give you immediately two marks. 
as you can see, this doesn't take a lot of your time. What you should really be spending the most time on is the last eight mark question. So the biggest tip that I have is memorize all of the most common definitional questions that come up on paper two so that these first two two mark questions you can answer instantaneously. The next question asks us to define the term devaluation indicated in the text paragraph seven. Again, two marks. This is a very common mistake that students make. Devaluation and depreciation might seem like the same thing, but they are not. They both mean a fall in the value of a currency, but a devaluation can only happen under a fixed exchange rate system. Therefore, it is caused by government interference or central bank interference, whereas a depreciation happens, you could say, naturally as caused by market forces. So the key part of this definition is actually under a fixed exchange rate system. You won't get two marks if this is not included. Okay, on to our first four mark question. So this one tells us using an exchange rate diagram, explain how the central bank could quote, use its foreign reserves, unquote, to restore the value of the Nigerian Naira. So this is where you need to have a strong understanding of exchange rate economic theory. So you might remember from your study that the central bank can use its foreign reserves to actually buy its own currency off the market and therefore increase the demand for the currency. So therefore, all you need to draw is an exchange rate diagram that first shows the increase in, in demand and therefore an increase in value of the currency. I also like to label the diagram as diagram A or diagram B, etc. So that during my eight mark essay question, I can actually reference this diagram and not have to draw it again. And this saves time. OK, so as long as your axes and everything are labeled correctly, you should be getting two marks out of two for the diagram. Now for the explanation, to get two out of two marks, you just have to clearly explain that the central bank will use its foreign reserves to buy the Naira off the market. This will increase the demand for it. And then, like we showed before, the demand shifts to the right and the price of the Naira increases again to before its value before the devaluation or depreciation. There you have it, two more marks. So if you see all of these questions are pretty simple, if you have a strong understanding of economic theory, you shouldn't be spending more than 30 minutes answering the first four questions. If you train yourself, you can answer it much faster than that. You should be leaving a lot more time for the final eight more question. And this is the key to succeeding in the paper too. Okay, the next four mark question asks us to use an 88 AS diagram to explain how a decision to tighten monetary policy might be harmful to the economy in paragraph seven. Well, first, you have to understand that to tighten monetary policy is contractionary monetary policy. In other words, to increase interest rates. You also have to understand that interest rates is the cost of borrowing or the opportunity cost of consumption. So therefore, for your explanation, you would explain that this will increase interest rates, therefore decrease consumption and investment, both of which are components of AD and therefore shift AD to the left, causing lower economic growth. For your diagram, the x-axis should be real GDP, the y-axis should be average price level. And if AD and AS are labeled correctly and you have the price and real GDP points, then there's no reason you shouldn't be getting four out of four marks for this one. So, so far we have accumulated 12 out of 20 marks and we only have eight marks left. So let's look at kind of an outline that you can make as you're planning to answer this eight mark question. I would begin by structuring the essay into pros and cons. So just write a list of the possible pros and cons and as I've highlighted above, your pros and cons should be a mix of your understanding of the text as well as your knowledge of economic theory. So here are some of the pros given by the text. So the text says that in the long term, weaker currency will help import substitution. This is given in paragraph seven. What is import substitution? Import substitution is exactly what it sounds like. It's an attempt to substitute domestic consumption of foreign goods to domestic produce. So trying to limit imports. How will a weaker currency do this in the long term. Well, if my currency is very weak, importing foreign goods becomes relatively more expensive. And as a result, the quantity demanded of foreign goods decreases. And therefore, we would also expect the trade balance to improve. So that's the first pro. Another pro that the text mentions is that it will increase foreign investment. This is because if there's less government intervention to devaluate the currency, then foreign investors can be sure that if they put their money in the banks, the exchanger is going to stay as high. Another benefit is that if you remember in the first paragraph, there's a mentioning of how the central bank is running out of foreign exchange reserves. So obviously, if we move to less central bank interference, then the central bank won't have to have such a high reserve of foreign exchange reserves to constantly be influencing the value of the currency. And you would kind of follow this same process when talking about the cons. So you could talk about the benefits and disadvantages of having a fixed exchange rate system according to economic theory, right? So you probably learned that a fixed exchange rate system is better for certainty for firms as there is the assurance that the exchange rate is not going to change. 
you would also probably refer to the text where it says that having a depreciated currency is not enough and that there still needs to be diversification of the economy. You would also mention the problems with tightening monetary policy and how this may cause a recession or lower economic growth. Probably mention the problem of inflation and how a depreciation in the currency can increase the cost of imports and if these imports are very PED inelastic then this might cause cost push inflation where AS shifts to the left. And then after taking 10 or so minutes to brainstorm these possible pros and cons, you can divide your essay into the first paragraph being pros, the second paragraph being cons, making sure to include at least two or three diagrams and in the introduction to define the key terms. So to define a fixed exchange rate system and a managed exchange rate system and make sure in your conclusion to make a decision which is better for the economy. Do not stay impartial. So I hope these tips were helpful and please let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to go over and if maybe I should make a list of necessary definitions that you need to learn for your paper twos. Leave comments below and please subscribe to keep learning.